Let me go to the changes that will make the QRS wide. The right and the left ventricles, because of the organization of that of the conduction system, they are actually simultaneously contracting or depolarizing. So any delay will actually separate the QRS, will make it wide and notch. You will see two peaks already. And that's what happens when there is a delay in either bundle branches. Like for example, if there's a delay in the left bundle branch, as you will see in this figure, the conduction will go to the right ventricle and will go to the left ventricle, meaning hindi na sila magkasabay na RV and LV. Mauuna yung RV before the LV, and instead of being simultaneous contraction or depolarization, they become synchronous. One becomes ahead of the other. So the, the QRS of the right will be recorded first, and the QRS of the left will be recorded later, such that if you look at V5 and V6, because these are the left leads, there will be notching of the QRS because the QRSs of the right RV and the LV has now separated, producing a wide QRS of more than 0.12 with notching of the QRSs in V5 and V6 in left bundle branch block and the opposite change in the opposite leads. What are the opposite leads of V6 will be V1, so if there will be broadening and notching of the R wave, the S wave will now become a widened and deeper in the opposite leads. Okay, so R, wide S. So you see a more negative deflection with wide S in V1 and the notching and the widening of the QRS in V5 and V6 in left bundle branch block. So this is an obligatory criteria. I already mentioned this one. You see the broadening and the notching in V5 and V6, and sometimes in 1 and AVL as well. Now, the other changes will be small or absent initial R waves in V1 and V2, followed by deep S waves, absent septal Q waves in V5, V6, and there is prolonged initial deflection of more than one and a half small squares in V5 and V6, meaning that there is delay in conduction. So this is a patient with wide QRS. You see an R, a small R, and a wide and deep S. So this is left bundle branch block, and if you verify it, there is broadening and notching of the R waves in V5 and V6, lead one, and AVL as well. Now, in, in bundle branch blocks, because the initial contraction is abnormal, it will be followed by abnormal recovery and activation or repolarization of that of the ventricles. And what is repolarization represented? The ST segment. It means that normally, and you look at V5 and V6, there will be ST segment depression because the ST segment repolarization will now be opposite to the direction of the QRS complex or the depolarization. And that is because of the left bundle branch block and not because of ischemia. Okay, so we read this one as a sinus rhythm with complete left bundle branch block. Now, uh, so these are the changes. QRS greater than 120, a QS pattern, and a broadening and notching of the V5 and V6. The opposite will happen in patients with right bundle branch block, but the common criterion that they share is the broadening and notching of the QRS. But instead of seeing the V5 and V6 broad and notch in patients with left bundle branch block, we will now see the broadening and the notching of the, the, the R waves in the right ventricular leads, which are V1 and V2, and the deepening and the, of the S waves will be seen in the opposite leads, which are V5 and V6, okay? So this is what happens. The left ventricle will be activated first and the right ventricle will be activated later. So you will see broadening and notching like rabbit ears in V1 and V2. The opposite change will be seen in V6 and V5. So again, 
notching and broadening. So it really depends on where you see it. V1 and V2, right bundle branch block. V5 and V6, left bundle branch block. Now, this is an ECG. What you notice, regular rhythm. I'll be at a little bit slow. You have P waves. If you look at the QRS, it's wide. Rabbit ear appearance, it's notch V1, V2 with deepening of the S wave in V5 and V6. So this patient has right bundle branch block, a QRS duration which, which is wide, wide S in B5 and V6, tall and uh, broad in v, uh, V1 and V2, but in addition, an axis which is left axis deviation. So aside from right bundle branch block, this patient in fact has a left anterior hemi block or a left anterior fascicular block because in patients with right bundle bl blanch block alone, the axis should be normal. RBBB plus right axis deviation could be seen in patients with RVH. RBBB with left axis deviation is seen in patients with right bundle branch block with associated left anterior hemi block. Thank you for watching the video. And if you like similar contents, please consider subscribing to my channel, like and share the video, and hit the notification bell so you will get updated.